Blair of the Mounties, the story of the Royal Northwest Mounted Police. We present the 14th episode in the dramatic serial Blair of the Mounties. On Inspector Blair's return from service in France, he finds himself an officer in the newly organized force, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. The old name has passed with the closing of the war, but it leaves behind it an imperishable tradition of service. Our old friend Sergeant Marshall is stationed at Renfield in northern Saskatchewan. Inspector Blair has run up to Renfield for a few days shooting. Our story opens on the Canadian National Train approaching Renfield. Gee, I'll be glad to get off this joy quarter train. Gosh, what a country. Darned if I know why we ever came up here. Hey, lay off that stuff, Pete. We had to blow somewhere after that Detroit job. But gosh, Tony, it's kind of different up here in Canada. And this idea of pulling a job up here don't sound so good to me. They got them mounted cops up here. Mounted cops, huh? Huh, you've been seeing too many movies. Them birds ain't used to professional guys like you and me. Why, they don't even carry a rod most of the time. So don't get to worrying about them none. Not while we got this here typewriter along. Well, maybe, Tony. Knocking off this here back might be easy enough. But it's the getaway I'm leery about. Say, ain't I put in a month getting onto this location where this here bank's a pushover? And as far as the getaway is concerned, well, we don't need none. What? Don't need no getaway? You ain't gone nuts, have you, Tony? Seems to me all you've been a-doing is talking rusky to them dukabors. Ain't gone religious on me, have you? <laughs> Shucks, Pete. That's part of the setup for this job. What? Say, them dukes ain't gonna help us none. Them boys don't stand for no rough stuff. Ah, oh, listen, I was raised in a Russian settlement, see? I know this took up our racket. Them guys is pacifists, see? I got next to the old guy that runs the Duke colony. Ivan, uh, Ivan is his name. Kidded him, he, we were strong for his religion. Ah, we got a home there as long as we want. You mean that's the getaway? Sure, the cops will never look for us there. It's a cinch, and them dukes will never give us away. But if they get wise to our racket, we'll be in Dutch, won't we? Say, who's going to tell them? I got everything fixed, I tell you. We pulled this job, pinch a car and head south. Then we leave the car and hide out in the bush till dark. After that, we cut cross-country to the Dukeborg village. Then we're okay, see? Gee, it don't look so rotten at that, Tony. Maybe it might work. Of course it'll work. Leave it to me. I got it all doped out. Well, I hope you're right. You know me, Pete. I never miss. Renfield. Next station, Renfield. Ah, Renfield. That's the burg. That's the burg. Now, listen. Just keep close to me and have that tummy gun handy, see? Come on, Pete, and make it snappy. There's the joint across the street. It's pretty near closing time. Gee, what a sleepy burg. There ain't nobody in sight. Didn't I tell you? It's a pushover. You sure there's just two guys in this here bank? Sure, that's all. The teller and the manager. You got that typewriter handy? Uh, sure. What do you think? Okay, then. Step on it. Come on. Get near closing time. Come on. Well, looks like I'm just in time. You're closing up? Well, yes, sir. Uh, just uh, three o'clock. Uh, something you want? Yeah, I'd uh, like to cash a check. Uh, let's see. Uh, $250. Peckers Bank in Chicago. Hmm. Have you any one in town here to identify you? Sure, your manager knows me. He's a friend of mine. Oh, excuse me. Uh, come in, I'll get Mr. Bartlett. Yeah, fine. You stay by the door, Pete. Oh, Mr. Bartlett, will you identify this gentleman? He's a friend of yours. Wants to cash a check. Eh? Oh, that? Hmm. Sorry, sir. Don't seem to place you. No? Well, that's too bad. Eh, uh, stick him out. Both of you guys, come on now, stick him up. Okay, Pete, keep that door covered. All clear outside? Sure, nobody in sight. Listen, you can't do this. You'll never get away with it. Ah, oh, shut up. Oh, we'll play a piece on this typewriter. Keep that gun on him, Pete. Ah, oh, this is fine. Vault open and everything. Ah, oh, here's the dough. Well, well, this is a soft touch. Now I gets me a nice little canvas sack, and here we go. You cheap four-flusher, you'll get a life sentence for this. Oh, yeah? Then I tell you to keep your trap shut. You ain't getting tired of life, are you? Hey, come on, Tommy. We gotta blow. All right. Say, listen, you two guys get in that vault. But listen, you can't. Ah, get in there. For God's sake, don't lock us in there, man. We'll suffocate. Get in there, I tell you. Hello, Inspector. We got back early. Any sport? Oh, not much. Got a couple of prairie chicken and a mallard. Anything doing? What, in Renfield? <laughs> Nothing ever happens here, sir. 
Hello, police office. Who? Oh, yes, Mr. Bartlett. What? What's that? Stuck up your bag and locked you in the vault. What? A submachine gun. All right. Be right down. Right away. Don't worry. We'll get them. Yes, all right. Goodbye. What is it, Marshal? Renfield Bank, sir. Held up by two men. Carried a submachine gun. Lucky you were here today. Oh, yes. Any other details? No, they locked the manager and his teller in the vault. Good Lord, how'd they get out? Bartlett managed to move the time lock setting up to four o'clock on his way into the vault. Then there's a safety release inside for just such an emergency. Mm. Well, get on to it, Marshal. Chase over the bank. Get the full story and descriptions of the men. Fingerprints if you can. I'll get on the telephone and put out a general warning. Well, Pete, there's three days gone and nobody got on to us. Well, looks like the worst is over, eh? And the heat ought to be dying down some. Well, was I right or not? Well, you was right about a safe hideout, I'll admit that. But I ain't so strong for this Duke of Boss stuff. Nothing but mush and vegetables. Don't they ever have any meat, for God's sakes? Well, no, you see, they're all vegetarians. Don't believe in taking life. Well, they're awful strict against killing. And these here prayer meetings every night, and me singing hymns. Can you picture it? Say, boy, if it gets any worse... I'm for making a break. Cops or no cops? Ah, take it easy, Pete. They got a big celebration today. Kind of a parade. Hey, you ain't going in no parade, are you? Easy now, easy. We got to kid them along. You see, I had to tell this old Ivan guy that we was interested in their religion. They got some funny stunts. Why, they might want to put us through some sort of a ceremony today. What? I tell you, I ain't going to stand for it. Hey, pipe down, pipe down. You got to go through with it. Why, it ain't going to hurt us none. Well, all right. Say, what time is it? Uh, pretty near daybreak, I reckon. They'll be starting the doings in a little while. Hey, Tony. Hey, look here. Why, what's wrong? Well, I, gosh, where's them clothes of mine? I left them on that chair. What's the friend, cats? Mine's gone too. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hey, you lousy double-crossing rat. Hey! What's eating you? Why, that dough. It was under the mattress. Come on now, where is it? Where is it? Why, how do I know? Say, look at here. Uh, where's that, that gun of mine's gone, too? Huh? I know what it is. It's them crazy dukes. They got it in the night. Hmm, wise guy, ain't you? Now they got the whole whites, clothes and all. Hold on, hold on, and let me figure this out, now. Oh, I got it. You see, these birds are celebrating their anniversary today. It's okay. They always pull them stunts. Everybody goes on a naked procession. It's just a stunt, Pete. You mean they don't wear no clothes at all? That's right. The whole outfit goes naked till sunset. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Pete, but it's only a stunt. Only a stunt? But listen here. How about that gun and all that dough? Fifty thousand bucks. For gosh sakes. Well, I don't know about the dough. Oh, I guess they're just uh, sort of taking care of it for us. Oh, it'll be okay, Pete. And hey, look out. Here's somebody coming. Look out. Ah, uh, my friend. The day is come. Oh, yeah? Say... Oh, for God's sakes, this guy ain't got no clothes on. Sure, uh, good morning, uh, Ivan. Uh, say, uh, you took them clothes, we ain't got nothing to wear. Ah, yes. Today, we put off all earthly clothing. It is the law. Well, yes, but say, uh, there was some money we had here. Do you know anything about that? Money, yes. If you take the Duke of Orphe, all money is common property. Huh? We have it safe. And the weapon of violence you have is not allowed. We destroy it. Well, suffering cats! See here, Marshal, those fellows couldn't have disappeared like that. It's impossible. I don't know whether it's impossible or not, sir, but there isn't a trace of them. We have accurate descriptions out everywhere. A few false alarms have been checked, but actually they seem to have just disappeared. That's funny. Looks bad, too. I got a wire from the commissioner. He's all hot about it. Hmm. Uh, Bank authorities are raising cane. The most baffling thing I ever saw. Better forget it for a while, Inspector. Something's sure to turn up. Anyhow, I've got another job today. What's that? Duke of Ors. Duke of Ors? What's wrong with them? Today is the 23rd. They have a big powwow out at the Duke of Ors village. It's one of their big days. I had the tip from Cameron a while ago, and they're putting on one of those naked processions again. Really? Funny people, those Duke of Ors. Fancy pulling into that sort of thing nowadays. It seems to be their way of celebrating. What are you going to do? Oh, I was going to get Cameron and a couple of deputies and take a run out there. There isn't much we can do except head them off so that they don't cause a scandal in town. One thing, they never get violent. No, that's funny. They're all big husky men. If they ever did start anything rough, it'd be awkward. Yes. Like to ride out there with me? Ah, yes. I suppose I might as well. All right. Let's be going. Uh. There's 
There they come, Inspector. By Jove, yes, and they're heading for the main road to town. All right, it's your show. Better get after that hit man. Hey there, Borodin. Oh, policeman, what do you seek? Where are you heading? We go to the town. Nothing doing, Ivan. You know, there'll only be trouble. You'll get fined again if you go there. No, we have now plenty of money. Good fortune has come to us. We care not for fines. See, Inspector, I don't get this. Old Ivan got some bee in his bonnet. Says he has plenty of money. Well, we've got to stop them somehow. Well, we can't do that unless we can prove a criminal action by any of them. And they never commit crimes. Hold on. Hold on. Look, Marshal. By what's wrong? See those two men? Remember that description? Gad, yes. It's those two crooks who robbed the bank. Jumping Moses. <laughs> Tony Bogowski. <laughs> There's your chance. Pick him up quick, Marshal. <laughs> well, of all the ridiculous things. Hey there. <laughs> you two, stand still. <laughs> no, what? Uh-huh. What? No. no. Hey, cut that out, Tony. We checked your fingerprints yesterday. Come on, talk English. Hey, you guys is <laughs> making a mistake, I tell you. No, you done it. Dukes, parades, applesauce. Come on, come on, give me a hand, Inspector. <laughs> All right, let's have that pair of handcuffs, Marshal, before I die of laughing. Help <laughs> me, Jimmy. What a headline for the Chicago papers. Tony Bugowski leads Duke of Ball Parade. <laughs> You have heard episode 14 in Blair of the Mounties. Tune in for the next chapter in this serial entitled The Clover Creek Mystery. <laughs>